Oh, hi. Welcome again. So we are moving right along. We are on a chapter 11 and we have two more chapters after this chapter. And um, we that should cover it. That's uh, 13 chapters in um, Making the Team, a Guide for Managers, Six Edition by um, Leah S. L. Thompson. And uh, we are really enjoying Ms. Thompson's work. Um, and she has really um, put a conclusive uh, group of information uh, and uh, theories together to bring it to a more manageable way that we can communicate and talk about it, have discussions around it. Again, it's very important that after you watch the video that we come back together for coffee and community, uh, coffee and conversation rather, and we discuss this. So I hope that you are taking little notes or questions you may have that engages us in our conversation and coffee and conversation. So with that said, let's move to our slides uh, for this chapter. This is chapter 11, and uh, we are going to go through these. And um, this is um, a slideshow. We're going to start with uh, teamwork. And so for this one, teamwork and teamwork, team task work and teamwork, I'm sorry. Teamwork and task work are related, but they are not the same thing. So what are they, Dr. Carol? Task work involves members' interactions with tasks, tools, machines, and systems to accomplish a team's mission. Whereas a strong task work lie, tie indicates two members of a team share many tasks and tools together. Now teamwork on the other hand is the process by which team members interact with and relate to one another. Task is we share a task. Team is where we are part of the team. Network structures, the relationship between task work networks and teamwork networks have impl implications for team functioning and performance. There are three general types of task work and teamwork network structures. They are simplex task work ties, simplex tie, uh, team, teamwork ties, and multiplex bundle ties. The factors that affect network structures are at least, there are at least three factors that affect the task work and teamwork network structures. And those are closure, how interconnected the team members are. Centralization refers to the extent to which most of the interaction is centered around one or more or a few core team members. And then we have specialization, which refers to the degree to which team members have unique knowledge and expertise. Now, what about external roles of team members? Well, identifying and understanding, guys, the roles that team members play, vice versa, the flow of information is in and out of a team is an important predictor of the team productivity performance. Again, identifying and understanding the roles that team members play vice a vice, the flow of information in and out of the team is, important, is an important predictor of team productivity and performance. Often roles are not formally assigned, but instead are taken on by team members through team negotiations process. A listing of more common important roles observed in real groups are included in exhibit 11.1, boundary spander, buffer, interpreter, advisor, gatekeeper, lobbyist, negotiator, or mediator, spokesperson, strategist, coordinator. We're going back to some of the words and terms we used in the beginning of the book. So despite the benefits of boundary spanning for teams, boundary spanning can be stressful and challenging. So requiring significant effort and time. So role overload occurs when a person has too much work and time available. What about organizational networks again? Sharing knowledge. An ideal organizational environment, in an ideal organizational environment, there is clear and consistent knowledge sharing among the different functional and geographic units. Knowledge sharing quickly disperses innovation, reduces unnecessary duplication of effort, and facilitates the implementation of best practices. So insider versus outsider knowledge valuation. Not 
invented here syndrome. <laughs> members of research groups overvalue knowledge that comes from in-group members or overvalue knowledge coming from their competitors. The source of knowledge makes a big difference, guys, a big difference in whether the team members feel threatened or intrigued by the information. It depends on who, it depends on who's bringing the information to you. People are more likely to value knowledge that comes from an external network source and devalue knowledge that comes from an internal member of a team. This is why we see a lot of consultants and consulting firms that are inter interacting and there because people believe what the people on the outside say versus the people on the inside. Because we're around the people on the inside, we observe them, we don't know. Uh, and and we, we put prejudice against people. Uh, on sometimes unknowingly we do it, but we do. Here's my capital. I told you, I believe in capital when we first started this uh, uh, on managing teams, human capital and social capital. So human capital is the organizational value that, that intellect, uh, educated and experienced people bring to their organization. That's human capital. Whereas social capital is the value people add to their team and organization through the ties to other people. Social capital is important. A lot of us will have human capital, but we do not have that social capital because it's hard for us to connect other people to people in the organization or bring benefits to the organization from other people we may have great contacts and resources with. And social capital is one that some people are gonna get jobs and they say, I don't know how they got that job. Well, knowledge sometimes is something that can be taught about how you do something in the organization. Sometimes it doesn't matter where, where you get the education from or what education it is, it matters who you know and, um, and how you can get them to give something or help us with something we need within the organization. So while human capital refers to individual ability, social capital refers to opportunities created through relationships. True statement and relationships, guys, that matters. If you learn nothing else, I want you to remember that relationships matter. Informal systems of connections and relationship between people develop over time. Guide the flow of information between people and teams. Uh, perceived network, people who have an, an astute knowledge of network links that have good assessment of what people and coalitions are powerful in organizations, in that organization as well. Click network, close-knit, self-contained network with redundant communication structures. Clicks sometimes work, sometimes they don't work. Social networks of two managers within the same company. And so we can see this. This is a manager A over here and manager B. I'm sorry about that. And so we can see the differences A brings and the difference uh, manager B brings. There's um, <laughs> it's, it's something, you have to look at this. So boundary spanning, boundary spanders are span organization ties and integrate, they span organizational ties, divides and integrate the knowledge and best practices from different areas of the organization. Structural holes separate redundant social contacts in an organization and structural holes are entrepreneurial opportunities for managers and leaders. And that is true. Um, and you're probably wondering why. Why would uh, structural holes um, be entrepreneurial opportunities? Because um, managers and leaders kind of know what's going on. They know the structure. They know kind of, some, some, some of them are well in the know. And this helps them to build opportunities that weren't already there because they know more about what's going on. Boundary loosening activities are activities that focus team members outside the team and organization. Boundary tightening are activities or activities that focus team members inward on the team and organization. Clicks versus entrepreneurial networks. Entrepreneurial networks, a less tightly knit group of business associations with contact in a variety of disparate organizational areas. Whereas information brokers are a critical junction contact between networks of people. Advantages and disadvantages of click and boundary spanning networks are in this particular slide. And we see um, click networks, advantages, high cohesion, loyalty support, increased efficiency of decision-making. They're all in it together. 
versus um, the, uh, the disadvantages of it is redundant communication, biased communication, groupthink, dispensable members. Boundary spanning networks are leverage, leverages diversity, capitalizes on opportunity, there's greater innovation, there are earlier promotions, higher salaries, and these boundary spanning networks and greater conflict, both task and relationship, power struggles, and those are the disadvantages. Team social capital, yes. So team social capital is the configuration of team members' social relationships within two categories. There are social relationships within the group and there are social relationships in the structure of the broader organization. Now, some teams have greater social cap capital liquidity because their members have positions in the overall social structure of the organization. Very true. And that liquidity is something I can use to buy other information with. You see how business is such a economic equation, an ongoing economic equation. People wonder, why do I need to know economics? You need to know it. Capital matter. We deal with capital every day, social, political, intellectual. We deal with all kinds of capital on a daily basis. And we need to understand the, the pros and cons of how you handle that capital. So the optimal configuration of work-related social ties uh, are a moderate level of internal closure within the group and the large group of bridge, bridging relationships and other group leaders. So let's talk about friendship, trust, and advice ties. People and teams bound along three specific types of ties. There are friendship ties. There are close interpersonal ties between people characterized by positive amenical relationship, amical, amical, oh my gosh, joint or I agree relationships. Trust ties involve both an effective social change and a cognitive reliability relationship perspective. And then there's advice ties. And that represents instrumental rather than expressive relationships and represent the exchange of expertise and information necessary to complete one's task or job. Personality and education affect network relationships and they really do. Advice, friendship and trust ties are all mutually exclusive, all right? There are four interplaying characteristics determine the extent to which negative relationships hurt team and organizational effectiveness relationship strength, reciprocity, cognition, and social distance are all four that determine characteristics to the extent to which negative relationships hurt teams. Leadership ties. Well, leader centrality performance hypothesis states that the team leader from whom subordinates seek advice tends to have a relatively comprehensive view of social structures of their team boundary management behavior between the team and the larger organization involves four keys, relating, scouting, persuading, and empowering. And as we see on um, exhibit 11.4, we can see team effectiveness and relating and what that means, being socially and politically aware, social and political capital here. Scouting means seeking information from managers, peers, and specialists, well, special specialists. And then persuading means obtaining external uh, support, meaning when you persuade, you got some kind of influence that you can get that support you need. You have some influence somewhere. And, and it shows below the team uh, focused behaviors of building team trust, caring for team members, diagnosing member behavior, investing problem systems uh, systematically, uh, influence, uh, delegating authority, exercising flexibility regarding the team decisions and coaching. So increasing your social capital. There, here we go. And this is important because people don't understand this. Social capital is one of the biggest soft skills that I think that we don't categorize the right way and people miss it. Strategic network expansion involves connecting to people and teams in such a way that the person is fulfilling a structural whole. To see the difference, guys, uh, between typical network expansion versus strategic network expansion, let, we'll take a look at uh, Exhibit 11.5.
From the point of view of employee, organizational benefits are maximized in a large network of non-redundant contacts. In short, it is better to know a lot of people who don't know one another. You got that? From the point of view of the employee, organizational benefits are maximized in a large network of non-redundant contacts. In short, it is better to know a lot of people who don't know one another. So here you go. Here's exhibit 11.5. And it, it looks at the social structure of competition, uh, typical network expansion, strategic network expansion. So it's U times U down here, times U and how this works. You see how a lot of these people you know four groups, but the four within these groups, a lot of people know each other. It's all over the place over here in strategic network expansion. So consider the following strategies and steps for individuals, teams, and organizations to build more connections across functional teams. Analyze your social network, identify structural holes in your organization, expand the size of the network, diversify networks, build hierarchical networks, recognize gender strips in networks and reputation management. There are six degrees of separation on this worksheet. I like this worksheet. I would um, take it and try to um, use it to build. And let's talk about this one in our um, coffee and conversation for this particular uh, chapter. I think we can get somewhere with this and uh, have a lot of fun with this one and doing the six degrees of separation worksheet. Um, I'd like to see you fill that out. <clears throat> I'll um, possibly send it to you. You fill it out and we can uh, discuss it and how you build your network. It's a very important worksheet. Um, exhibit 11.7 just talks about external, external team networking and the context of organizational uh, demography. And so we want to look at this too, and I think you'll take a look at that and it'll help you greatly. And we'll discuss this in with our activity. So bringing this chapter to a close, teams are not independent entities within the organization. Um, structural solutions should be put in place to integrate teams with other individuals and teams within the organization. Teams need boundary spanders and gatekeepers to bring information in as well as distribute knowledge outside the team. And then managing internal and external dynamics in a team is difficult and requires constantly changing focus. So that's it for this week, uh, this chapter. Uh, we have an exercise that we wanna have fun with in our coffee community. And I look so forward to doing that with you. And so this was uh, chapter uh, 11 and um, in chapter 11, it was a great exercise, a lot of fun activities we can do on team networking and social capital. It's a great exercise too, from a team networking and social capital, especially social capital's uh, perspective to do the exercise on building social capital in your organization. This is where a lot of us uh, go wrong and we need to do this in order to make the greatest impact for our careers in and outside of organizations. So. We want to uh, work on that a little and make sure we're getting that done. So that's it for chapter 11. I'll see you uh, next for chapter 12. Take care.